ZANU PF negotiates ED terms, and Chamisa speaks. Before the two can begin negotiations to break the current impasse, ZANU PF claims opposition leader of the Citizens Coalition for Change CCC. Nelson Chamisa must humble himself and congratulate President Emerson Umningagwa on his re election in the disputed elections held in August. Citing vote fraud in the polls that was deemed implausible by observer missions, such as the one from the Southern African Development Community SADC, Chamisa has refused to concede loss in the election. Numerous anomalies in the election were reported by observation teams, one of which was the intimidation of opposition voters by forever associates of Zimbabwe FAS, a secretive ZANU PF affiliate. The observation missions reported that the elections did not meet local regional, and global requirements for conducting free and fair elections. Chamisa recently dispatched emissaries to the ZANU-PF leader's office and made hints about meeting with the Mingagwa to resolve the political disagreement arising from the contested elections. Hardliners in the ZANU-PF, however, have closed the door on him. Speaking at a press conference on Monday at the party's headquarters in Harare, Christopher Mutsvangwa, a spokesman for ZANU-PF, stated that the ruling party was amenable to negotiations, but only after Chamisa recognized Mingagwa's victory. Mutsvangwa stated, The first step is that Chamisa should send a message to the president congratulating him on winning the August 2023 elections. Many doors would reopen with those magical words. Since the opposition MPs have already completed the task, they are present at Mount Hampton Parliament. He ought to accept if his MPs are able to. Promise Mkwananzi, a spokesperson for the CCC, contrasted this by saying the party has no interest in supporting Mingagwa's dubious win. How is it possible for President Chamisa to congratulate someone on a contentious election? In an interview yesterday, Mkwananzi questioned Newsday. The electoral process was denounced by all election observers, including SADC and the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission. We want to talk about political reforms and a common vision and future for Zimbabwe. Not about endorsing Mr. Umingagwa. Political analyst Vivid Greed claimed that Sanu PF was attempting to create challenging conversation circumstances. Among other reasons, the CCC feels that there were irregularities in the election and is hence requesting a conversation. Thus, a congrats message would run counter to this foundation for discussion, Greed stated. In order to have a discourse, these barriers must be removed. Parties should engage in discourse without demanding severe preconditions if there is political desire, allowing all sensitive subjects to be discussed. According to Mutsvangwa, Sanu PF was sincere in their conversation with a structured CCC. We are natural party planners, so they are welcome to invite us if they so like. He said, perhaps they might come so we can all learn from one other. There is complete disarray there, and we don't value that because we would rather organize systematic resistance that advances the party. Our president and ZANU-PF sincerely feel this way. Mutsvangwa was alluding to the internal strife inside the CCC as a result of Senjizo Chibangu, the self-appointed acting secretary general, recalling the party's legislators and council members. On Saturday, Zimbabwe will hold by-elections to fill positions left empty by the recalls. The ruling party has abandoned Shibangu, despite the fact that he has been exposed as a ZANU-PF pawn, Mutsvangwa declared. As a party, we have everything to lose and absolutely nothing to gain by the fights which are in the CCC. Therefore, do not attempt to claim that we are trying to disorganize the opposition in order to benefit ourselves. These are domestic issues that ZANU-PF is being forced to deal with. Additionally, Mutsvangwa stated that ZANU-PF had no interest in amending the country's constitution to allow Omningagwa to serve a third term. He declared, We do not intend to amend the constitution or consider a third term for this or that. The Zimbabwean constitution, section 91, stipulates that the president may hold office for a maximum of two terms. Umningagwa is presently serving his second and last term. Unless the constitution is changed, he would not be qualified to run in the general election of 2028. On the other hand, 
Mingagua and his party in power have been charged with manipulating the recalls in order to force a two-thirds majority in parliament, which would facilitate the easy amendment of the constitution. Newsday.